Well, hello, friends. Today we are going to work on drag and drop again. So it's been a while since we touched that, but if you recall in the file manager here, we can start a drag and drag something around, and we can uh, drop it in some places. For instance, um, if we open up a text editor, we can drag something into the um, text editor and it opens there, but we can't drag and drop uh, files in the file manager. <clears throat> so I would like that to be a thing. And I guess I would also like it if you could sort of um, hover over these things and they would light up so it shows you that, hey, you can drop it on me, or um, some indication like that. And I imagine that we would just draw like a little um, rectangle around the drop target or whatever you want to call it. So. Um, Maybe we'll start with that stuff. So the way I imagine it working is that when we're dragging something, instead of sending um, mouse move events to the thing that we're dragging over, we can instead send like a, a drag, something is being dragged event, like a drag move. Um, so you would have like a drag move. And uh, if you drop something on something, then you get a um, drop event. So we already have the drop event, you can actually see it down here, but uh, we don't have anything for when you're dragging across a widget, so that's what would help us um, actually highlight if you're currently over some some sub part of the widget that you could drop it on. So let's just get started on this. Um, so imagine that we would add some new events to um, to widget here, formerly known as G widget, now GUI widget. Um, so we have mouse move event, mouse down, mouse up, mouse wheel, and we have drop event. So I'm thinking we add drag move event, maybe. Um, it's kind of weird how there's no underscore here. Why isn't it mouse move event? I'm not really sure. Why Why are these named this way? Why is it focus in, not focus in? Why did I name these things that way? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll say that this gives you a drag event and... Um, we'll start with that. And that can be very similar to a drop event, because I think whether or not uh, you're able to, whether or not something is a, a, like a drop target, it sort of depends on what it is that you're dragging, right? So when you're dragging across a widget, that widget needs to look at what's being dragged to figure out if it really wants to accept that drop. So I think that's why we want to have a special event for this so that we can, uh, we don't need the data that's being dragged. We're not gonna drag that across, but we do need the data type because I think that's what we will um, base the decision on. So, drag event. So it's, it has the same stuff as a drop event, so it's just the drop event also includes the drop data. So, okay, that's fine. And how does this work? Currently, when we're dragging, then we, um, I forget how this is implemented. It's in the Windows server, we have logic for this. I think it's maybe in Window Manager, there's a DND, &D. we call it DND &D for drag and drop. And okay, so start drag and drop drag. Um, when you initiate a drag, then we set the window manager's current drag and drop client. So I guess we have a single drag and drop client active at any given time. And that's a Windows Server client connection. And then we have the drag text bitmap, data type and data and so on. And then we change the cursor to the hand, um, which I guess is implied by us having a drag and drop um, context or whatever. 
So, um, what we want to do is see, is this being used anywhere to, to avoid something? Ongoing drag. I think this is a window move. Or wait, no, what am I saying? No, this is a drag. Okay. So unless we have a DMD client that we uh, right. Um, process ongoing drag. So why do we call that? Okay, so when we have a mouse event, then the very first thing we do is check if there's an ongoing drag. And... But the only thing that we're interested in, apparently... Oh, if event type... If not, event type is mouse up and mouse button is left. So, um, unless you are letting go of the left mouse button, then uh, return true here means that we will swallow every single mouse event while the drag is active. So, this here will short circuit here and return and do no further mouse event processing. Um, so I think we should not short circuit it like that, but we should instead say return false and then processing will continue, but we have a DND client, so actually it's a little tricky because we want to do hit testing to figure out where we are and what we're mousing over and everything. Um, let's see how that works. Uh, where do we create the mouse move event? Where are we? Process mouse event. Okay. So basically, if process ongoing drag. We should probably deal with that inside this function that we can contain all of it here. Um, so the logic for the um, mouse event is down here. Um, So this is the part where we are. Okay, so let's let's make a very slim down version of this. Let's process ongoing drag. Um, okay, now we're gonna make a much smaller thing. So um, I didn't let go of the drag yet. See if we should send some drag and drag move events. Okay, and then we gotta walk the window stack from front to back. And we don't care about resizing or moving windows, we don't care about changing opacity. Um, we change, let's see, we don't care about uh, clicking on windows, we don't care about any of this, uh, we don't care about, wait, global cursor tracking, uh, we don't care about that. And what will he do on mouse event? 
Wait, that's for the window frame. Deliver mouse mat. Oh, right. So, okay. So this is only interesting if we are hitting the contents of the window, not the window frame. Right, so just stripping stripping down the normal um, mouse event loop here, or mouse event um, handling. So this became very simple. So for each visible window from front to back, we figure out what's the window frame rect. And actually, we should only look at the window rect itself. If you're hitting the window frame, we don't care. Um, so, return, iteration, decision, continue. Oops, wait, what did I do wrong here? Oh. And we don't need that. Okay, so for each visible window from front to back, unless we're in the window rect, continue iterating. Hovered window. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but we can we can let that be here. Um, and then we'll send a translated event, right? But we have to do something different here. So we need to not just make a different event, but if event type is event mouse move. Okay, so we are gonna switch this up a little bit. And we'll put this up here instead. Okay. It's a little easier to understand now, right? Because if there's no ongoing drag, just return. Otherwise, if this is a mouse move, then we um, turn it in, we want to turn it into a drag move. And then otherwise, if this is not a mouse up for the left mouse button, then we swallow it. Or no, then we process it, but if it is that, then we swallow it. Yeah. Anyway, um, talking too much, not programming enough. So here, um, translated just returns a mouse event of the same type, which is um, window relative coordinates. So that's not enough here. We want to actually create a new <laughs> drag event. <clears throat> Or, or maybe we can say that what we want to do is send a... Wait, how the heck does this even work? Uh, I guess we gotta... Um, mouse move... I'm just thinking... Oh, let's, let's create a separate event for it. So drag move. Drag move. All right. Where are we even going? Okay. The little mouse event. So let's create a drag event here. Drag event. Uh, it's not a thing. Of course, I just added it here. So, this event. Um, so, we need a um, drag. Do you have a drop event here? We don't. Okay, well. You know, okay, fine. I'm I'm gonna be a little bit lazy and um, say that we have a flag on mouse event. Who is drag? I don't know if that's lazy or um, just actually kind of good use of time. But we'll say um, void. Set to drag. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tr 
contains loaded event, set drag true. And then we can still deliver the mouse event and it will be dispatched to the window who will handle it. How exactly will arrive at here is mouse event. So we'll do handle mouse event and then here, mouse move. Do we want to? Yes, we'll make it a flag. Okay, is drag. And then we'll just change the IPC protocol so that mouse move has a flag for is drag. Cool. Mm. Alright, I think that could be neat. And then in the abstract, or in the item view, we could hook this event now. So, virtual void, um, drag, move event. And of course, we have to make sure that we dispatch this event from the widget class. So, event um, we'll just put it here, maybe in case event drag move. Move. And so I already added this one, right? But we need to implement it also. Okay, let's just do this. Drag, move. Something like that. Um, and it's getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but drag move event event. anything special for this yet uh, but I do want to build faster um, now we need to actually go in the Windows Server connection and make sure that we handle this correctly because um, the mouse move message now has an additional flag Let's see if message is drag. Do one thing, otherwise do the other. So in this case, it's a drag move. Boom. And I guess we're also going to have some additional stuff. So the data type is going to be here. Call it drag data type. And the message. Drag event. And I don't need to pass in the type actually, so I'll just like that. Drag event has what? The I already forgot what it had. Position, text, and data type. Maybe data type is all that we need. We don't need the text either. Okay. 
set on position. And the data type. And then we gotta change the message a bit more. server um, drag uh, thingy here a little bit, which is a bit gross, but we're going to stick with it for now. This will show up on the other side. We'll see. So, what are we going to do with it when we get it? Um, I guess we want to figure out. Um, are we hovering over something? So, index is index at event position. Event position. If index is valid, then we're going to do something with it. Mm, like drag moving over. Um, just print out the index. That'd be kind of interesting. And then uh, relinking is not fast. This will be okay. Alright, so if we drag something like this guy right here. Oh no! Look at us dealing with uninitialized memory. That's not very good. Um, I wonder. Yeah, right, we didn't relink things. Sneaky build system, not rebuilding everything. I started working on an experimental um, CMake port of the build system, but it is a big thing. So this doesn't look right here. What the heck? Um, that was a bit weird. But let's just ignore that. Okay, so why does it die? And window event. And GUI window event. Windows server connection. Drive it. Post and what's wrong with this? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I guess I'm reaching the end here, presumably. Ref, if not null, on a string impulse, telling us. And here. Um, so a little bit weird. Seems like we wouldn't be doing anything in this function at all unless this gets folded in, but that'll do nothing. Um, well, let's just put something here. The event type is event drag mode. Um, or actually, we should, yeah, we should do the same thing that we do for mouse mode. We should figure out the widget to send it to. Send it to. So this part right here. But a simplified version. So we do a hit test with the drag event is static cast drag event. Okay. And then we gotta make a localized version of the drag event. But these are simpler, so it's just this and local position and the drag event data type. So local position is just the, um, the position translated to widget relative coordinates. So none of that necessary and we can just do that. We don't want to do hovering. Um, I think maybe we're good. All right, so with GUI and sync and run and also maybe that file manager. Some of the libgui uh, code has gotten quite slow to build, I have to say. Okay, so that kills us. Uh, we are in the same place in window event. This is a bit surprising. Okay, we'll just say window. Event. Um, and event type, maybe. Just lock that, see what we get. A little bit curious. Of course, the type is, um, <clears throat> is um, unsigned. So we'll have to work out what that is, but we can do that. Okay, so what happened? The event is 10.24, all right, so I bet you that that's some kind of a drag-related uh, event. Mm, let's see, libgui events, they start at 1,000, so if we have our drag move, that's 10.23, drop is 10.24. Hmm. So who is sending us this thing right here? Oh shit, wait, hold on. Are we doing the, um, I bet we're setting the wrong type. Yeah, 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 drag event. Um, <laughs> pretends to be event drag, uh, drop. But we gotta say that we are a drag move. Um, so I guess we should take the event type here. So type. Dang it. All right, well, that was a stupid problem. So, um, type, or just type, maybe, like that. And then make drag event. 
Uh, we have to tweak it. So like this, like this, and like that, and like that, and uh, drag move. All right, you big jerk. That was a silly mistake. That's the kind of thing that happens, right? So the event object, they um, encode which type of, which subclass of event they are in the type field. And it's something that every subclass has to pass to the base class constructor. And then based on this type um, that you have for a given event object, we cast the event object to the uh, relevant subclass of event. And so here we were casting it to something that it was not, and then we were getting very confused when trying to use it. Um, we are in window CPP 23.28, which is oh, right here. OK, fine. Um, I guess if we cast a drag event, it would work. Or no, 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 wait, what am I doing? Um, maybe we have to static cast, sorry. Uh, event type. Because the trick is that um, this actually returns an unsigned, which is a little bit weird. But it is what it is. And the reason that it's like that is because type um, the the base event class lives in libcore. And then we um, subclass core event in uh, GUI event. And then we tack on our own types here. So that's why we start these event types at 1000, it's just to make sure that we don't clash with core event type. It's a little bit um, it's not perfect, but it is pretty okay. So now that we have the right types, we can actually do something more sensible. It's pretty noisy right here. Of course we see every event now that it happens. So let's drag this guy. We can see drag move happening down there. And the drag move actually propagates actually propagates up the um, widget ancestor chain. That's just the event bubbling happening because nobody accepts the event, so it bubbles up through the widget tree. Um, so you see many, many uh, printouts for each thing. So um, let's see event. We can get rid of that spam. And the drag move spam. Let's say that we go in item view, because that's the one we were interested in. And we'll say here that we accept the event if you're dragging if you're dragging over an item view, because then we can be a little more quiet in those cases. Come here now. Um, that did not have the intended effect. Mm. Drag moving over model index, sure. But then, oh, we go to base class, and then what happens? So base class, oh, and the base class ignores it. Okay, that's stupid. So I don't want to call base class in this case. Because, I mean, if I've already accepted something, I, I don't need to call base class. Maybe we'll always accept a drag move. Okay, so now you can see over there that we are figuring out which thing you're dragging over. Here you're dragging over nothing. Um, so, it would be kind of cool if um, how should, how the heck should this work? Like, maybe we could have a, because what we want to do is we want to figure out, like, is this, the thing that you're dragging over, is that 
droppable? Or is that a potential target? And that really depends on if it's a folder or if it's not a folder. Because if it's a folder, then we could drop on it. So we want to do a little highlight. Hmm. Interesting. So how do we do that? Um, I guess we have to ask the model if something is um, accepts a drag. So this would have to be a data role in the model. So this is for asking um, for the drag data for, for initiating a new drag, but um, we also need something like um, accept drop um, Mm. Actually, this is more complicated than that because we need to ask about a specific type. So, um, virtual bool accepts drop. Mm. Can accept. Drag data, drag data, um, can accept drag, accept drag, something like that maybe, uh, and then we just pass in the drag uh, data type, mm, and by default we'll say false. And uh, that's kind of unreadable. Um, do we have model CPP? Yes, we do. Okay, so I'll just put the implementation here, the default one. Um, model accepts drag. So this we will uh, override this in the file system model. Mm. Hmm. Okay, let's try it this way. So the file system model can say. Abstract and it should be a string view actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now file system model can wait, 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 wait. We have to also provide an index, obviously. What was I thinking? Const model index. System model accepts drag. If index is not valid, return false. Um, node is index. Wait, what do we say? Node. There's some node thing where we can get the node. I just want to get the node. This node, okay, so 
is node index. Okay. So this will give me the fast model node, which has the metadata. And why does it? Oh, it thinks I'm editing the kernel. Um, so I got. And get access to all of these interesting things about the thing that we are dragging over. So return node is directory. Uh, and then I guess we can say if data type. And what the heck did I call that? Like file list or something like that? Yeah, 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 file list. Mm. Um, wait, wait, wait. This is clipboard code. Shit, how did that, how did that work? <laughs> I forget. This thing needs to be better. Um, it's URL list. Oh, look at that. So we have file list on the clipboard and URL list um, for the drags. That's not good. It's very inconsistent. That's what happens when you write code like weeks apart. Anyway, that's something to fix up. So if the data type is not URL uh, list, return false because we only accept URL list and only if the target node is a directory. Okay, so drag move event. Now we'll say if Google accepts acceptable is model accepts drag at index um, and the event data type drag of type event data type moving over index accepted is acceptable is. All right, so this will be interesting. <laughs> Oops. Ugh, crap. And what went wrong here? Initiate drag happened twice. We'll find out why in a moment. Okay. So it's not acceptable here. It's not acceptable anywhere. All right, and then we drag across other stuff, we get other results, but it doesn't accept any of them. Fine. Is that because I need to rebuild a whole bunch of crap, maybe? Mm. Wait, what did it say that the drag type was? Oh, it's a drag of type. Uh huh. So, how did we mess this up? Windows Server connection, perhaps? The drag data type. Drag move. Drag event. We save the data type. That's cool. But maybe we're not getting it from the other side. Set drag. I feel like I'm probably not calling set drag data. I just only made that function. I never actually called it. Um, D and D data type. Right. And look at that, these are acceptable. 
it's kind of cool. Um, I wonder how we made it crash before. I don't know. Ah, one thing that's for sure about crashes, they always come back, so don't gotta worry about that too much. Um, now, I wonder what would be a good visual cue, like, maybe it would be cool to, like, make a slightly different icon, like it would open up a little bit or something, but for now, let's just do a, um, uh, some kind of a rectangle or something. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, in the item view, we should set this up. So if it is acceptable, then uh, drop target candid drop candidate um, index can be index if acceptable. Um, so let's we'll say um, index. But, ah, what am I doing? Model index new drop candidate index is an invalid index. I'll just put that here. Define D and D debug, let's say. Or maybe drag. Ah, uh, D and D is pretty good. Um, we're doing drag drop. Drag drop. Drag and drop. Drag drop. Drag drop is a good name. Okay, so m drop candidate index is new drop candidate index. If m drop candidate index is not new, then set it and update so that we get a repaint. All right. Um, now we need to save this here index and um, we need to um, let's see how we do this so in the paint event and I realize that I'm only doing this for a single view type right now, so this is not going to work in the other view types, but we're going to have to do these one by one anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll work it out how to make it work, and then it'll be a separate task to bring this functionality to the other views and, and put it at the right abstraction layer and everything. Um, <clears throat> so if something is a selected item, then we use a different background color for the um, text. So that's what you see when we, if we click one of these guys to select it, you see that uh, this background here behind the um, name is different. So that's this background color here. This is where we're painting all of the children or all of the items in an item view. This is the item view right here in case, in case that was not obvious. We have a table view and a columns view. But right now we're working with the item view, which is called icon view apparently here in the toolbar. Uh, maybe it should be, maybe this class should be called an icon view. I'm not sure. That's a separate issue. Um, probably it should be called icon view. But what we want to do is check if we are painting the current drop candidate and if so paint him somehow differently, I guess. So we could just draw like a nice little rect around the whole thing if this is the drop candidate. So if the model index is the drop candidate index, then 
painter draw rect. Um, and we'll draw it around the item rect. And we'll use a color that's. Mm, we'll grab something from the palette, like the. Um, maybe just a selection, actually. Might look good. Rough. I don't remember what rough is. I think that's. That it's not. The rect wouldn't be like completely. Um, sharp on the edges, but it would be like one pixel of rounding. I think that's what rough is. I haven't used it in forever. Um, let's see if that's what it is. Uh, it's not doing what I was expecting. Did I even... Did I even recompile? I didn't. I did not even recompile. That's very silly. So originally, uh, Serenity had a more Windows 3.1 look, and a lot of things had these Windows 3.1-esque rounded corners, as like you see here. I don't know if you can see it because it's, it's kind of subtle, but it's not a fully uh, sharp rectangle. This actually makes me realize that the um, item rects are um, a bit weird, like the the um, item rects, uh, the the icons and the text are not centered in the item rects, which I guess explains why these things are closer to the top here. I just never thought about that. Also, it is a bit weird that you can apparently select over the you can rubber band over the scroll bar. That's really bizarre. Um, I feel like someone mentioned that at some point and I just forgot about looking into it, but yeah, that's clearly not right. <laughs> the rubber band should not go over the scroll bar. Um, but that looks kind of cool, I gotta say. Like, zhoof. It's like saying, hey, drop it on me, dude. And it's a bit strange that, um, like, I have to go over here, but then the rectangle appears around the whole item rect. Um, so it's like, it only happens when I touch the icon or the label with the drag, but... Um, maybe it should... Uh, I don't know. What's the right behavior? I think the visual cue is probably what's wrong, so let's try a different visual cue. Instead of just drawing the item rect, we can draw the icon rect. And we can maybe inflate it a little bit so that we get, um, I don't know, like four pixels on each side. Inflated, sorry. This, by the way, is like this subtle thing in the Serenity API style that I really like. And um, a lot of people say that they like it when they realize what it is. So um, like the Rect API has inflate. And this will inflate the icon rect. So this uh, alters icon rect. But you can also get, uh, you can also do icon rect inflated for four. And this will give you a new rect, so you actually have to save this somewhere. And this uh, does not change icon rect. Instead, it gives you a new rect with um, that's inflated, so like wider and taller. Uh, I, I like that difference between inflate and inflated. There's also like translate and translated, and uh, Shrink and shrunken, I think. Uh, do we have shrunken? Yes, we do. Shrunken and shrink. Just a nice little thing that I like. And now I told you about it. Um, so, what would this look like? Come here. Oh! This one makes a little bit more sense. It, it's almost like, like it's a bit weird that this makes it obvious that it's weird how um, 
like the area between the icon and the text is like inactive or whatever you call it. So like when I'm here, it doesn't consider it as part of the um, of the folder item, but here it does. And down here it is because I'm hovering the label, and here I'm hovering the icon. In between, I'm not hovering. That doesn't seem good. Probably we should come up with some kind of a rect that's like the active rect or something like that for purposes of dropping stuff. I'm not exactly sure. I think this is something that we're going to have to work more on, but in the interest of, of moving forward, let's let's be happy with this for now. Um, and let's say, fix me. This visualization is not perfect. Not great. Um, since it's also, as it's also possible to drop things on the text label. Um, uh, the, uh, yeah, that's a fix me. And we'll get back to that at some point. So, what happens if you drop, by the way? We get a drop event, which we do nothing with. So, let's handle that. Item view. Um, virtual void drop event. And I think we can put this way further up in the abstract view. Drop event. This is really, um, we should handle more things at the abstract view base class level because that um, brings that functionality to all the different views. So I should be doing it with the drag move event as well. It's just that right now I don't want to deal with that. So we're taking it as we go. So we drop. And that means that, what does that mean? Mm. What do we normally do in drop event? I forget. Um, we accept the event and then look at the data and blah, blah, blah. So in the case of a view, we really just want to give it, give this to someone, right? We don't want to do any kind of processing here because we're in an abstract base class. So it's up to the uh, whoever is embedding us to do something with this information. So we'll say uh, if on drop event, I guess on drop event event, and then we'll. Let someone else deal with this. So maybe it doesn't need to be called on drop event. We'll like on drop um, and then function void const model index const drop event and we should include the index. So. If the index is not valid, then um, I think we'll accept the event here for now. And um, we don't have a model. I guess we can do nothing. I guess we'll accept the event, but we'll have nothing. Um, if the index is not valid, return. Otherwise, on drop index event. Okay, so what are we gonna do with that? We will um, in file manager. Where are we creating one of these? Here. Okay. So we'll say m item view on drop index and event event sorry um and what are we going to do 
with this? What do we do when we paste something? Paste action. Oh, wait, hold on. Oops. We paste, then we do all this gunk right here. Um, so There's going to be more complexity to this because we want to differentiate between like um, like a move drag versus a copy drag and things like that. But I think maybe for now we will just we will just say oh wait this this is the code that just um, directory view is a class in the file manager that abstracts three different views and. Um, puts them on top of the same file system model. So here we're just forwarding stuff. So we can do this regardless. Run drop. Columns. And this will be function void const um, I guess oh what are we gonna hand out here We're dropping something so drop event wait a minute GUI drop event, right, on drop. Okay, and then who uses this? File manager main. Tree, no, no, not the tree view. Who else uses this? Here it is, directory view, on drop. Index and the other thing was the GUI drop event. Hmm. Dropped. Hello. Index drop. data dropped on index okay so how is this going to turn out that we are now we're going to look at into the data that's being dropped. So this should be the list of files that we're dragging, basically. Um, so I'm dropping this on this guy, and hello! This file right here, in a new line, was dropped on this model index. Cool. And then do we work with indices here? Yes, we do. Okay, so... This would be a let's do a um, fugly variant of the paste action. So drop. I'm gonna need some kind of um, mime type helper object, I think, at some point. But right now we don't have that. So data and type and blah 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 blah. Copy lines. Uh, that's the event data. 
if event type data type is not URL list return no files to drop. And what was this? This is the full path to the thing that we're dragging, right? So we need the thing that we are dropping on. That's the target, if you will. So we'll call it the target node. Let's say if target node is directory. Um, return. We'll, we'll have to fix up more cases. Like you should be able to like drag something from one window to another and stuff like that. One thing at a time. Um, in fact, maybe if, if you're hovering over nothing, then the target node should be the um, directory that we are showing in the view. But anyway, we'll get to that too. So the current path, blah, blah, blah. This is just iterating over the lines in the URL list. It's kind of gross. Um, new path. Current directory, what is that about? Oh, that's where we're dragging from. No, it's not. Oh, so this should not be the path, it should be the target node path. New path it should be the target node full path. So we should put that here. What is full path? takes a model. Oh, I have to give it the model because it doesn't know how to get to the model. Can we get to that from here? No. Ugh, that's so annoying. How do I get to the model? Uh, I see. That's why we need the view. That's why this guy was being, he was including the view so that we could get to the model. That makes sense then. Um, so I'll just pass along the view as well. No big deal. So ten 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 columnos and e tens. All right. So on drop. Now has a GUI abstract view. Coolio. Wait, does directory view have a model? How does that even work? Um, I don't trust it. Should I? Directory view model? Maybe that's fine. Then why do I need view? Not even the right type. Shit. All right. I uh, we're just gonna power forward and um, work it out later. Um, okay. So the new path is target node full path slash the base name of the thing that we are copying. Which is current path. Current path is such a shit name. Uh, path to copy. Um, copied lines. The heck. Um, paths to copy. Okay. And then we copy file. Path to copy into the new path. Good. Could not drop S into S. I'm just going to copy here. Uh, path to copy and 
new path uh, characters. All right. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so if I drag this guy onto little, could not copy this file to this file. Why not? Oh, because of this file. Right. Um, it's a URL. We gotta strip that down. Thankfully, that's pretty easy because we have a URL class. So we just gotta get that guy and um, let's see. Path to copy. Um, um, auto URL to copy. Path to copy. So if it's well, not valid, okay. And then path to copy is. Do we have base name? No, we don't. So we gotta do, okay. Okay, so a little bit awkward because we have to use URL, but it's okay. Um, all right, so we'll drag window manager into little. And look at that, it's in here. How cool is that? Let's try something else. Drag README into www. Poof. And README is here. Well, dang. That's some nice progress. What happens if you drag one folder into another? Oof. Look at that. Pretty awesome. All right, all right. So, time to do some commits. Oof, look at that. We have been editing left and right here. So, <sighs> let's see what we can start with. I think maybe we'll do the Windows Server stuff first. A lot of this is interdependent. It's kind of annoying. But the item view stuff is entirely separate. So, okay, so let's add lip GUI. Um, event and widget and window and window server connection. Who else is there? These guys can be separated. Okay. And then everything in the Windows Server has to come along for this one. Okay, so Windows Server plus lib GUI. Um, add a drag move event. Drag move event. This uh, allows Windows widgets to learn when and something is being dragged over them. Uh, they can then uh, repaint themselves somehow to visually indicate to indicate that they are uh, willing to accept a drop. Uh, currently, this is P backing somewhat on the mouse event mechanism in the in Windows server. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not sure that's the best design, but it seemed um, easier to um, do it this way right now. Okay. 
And then we'll do the, the GUI changes. Um, which is just adding the drop event to the abstract view. And um, all the model stuff is separated, actually. Um, so maybe we can do the model thing separately. So. Maybe we can even do only the model first. Okay, let's be good boys about this and separate it out. GUI. Add uh, GUI model accept drag. Model index string drag type. Um, this allows a model to indicate whether a uh, specific index, whether it would accept a drag, dropped uh, drag, what do we call these? I guess we just call them drags. Accept a drag, dropped on a given index. A drag with a given data type being dropped on a given index. Okay. GUI. Um, uh, well, system model indicate. Except um, drags I wonder if we should call it like accept drop or accept uh, accept I don't know accept drags because what you're really accepting is the drop you're not accepting the drag ah uh, um accept set system model accept drags. Drops. Probably we should call them drops. Damn it. Um, except drops onto um, URL with drops onto directories. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, we should rename the API actually. So, drag, damn it, accepts drop. No, that sounds so bad. Ah, dang it. Okay, fine. I'm changing my mind back. Accept URL list drags. Because what it is, it's, it is the thing that we are dragging, we're referring to that as a drag. It's a drag operation actually or drag for short, so let's call it a drag. Um, and then we have the changes in the item view and abstract view. GUI abstract view. It's just doing the drop only here, so GUI. H GUI. Um, uh, dropping drags on abstract view. Um, you can now drop things on an abstract view, which will ask the model, ask its model, if the um, drag is acceptable to drop at the index where it's dropped. If it's acceptable, accepted by the model, 
Um, the view will invoke the on drop hook. Well, what do we call it? I don't call it invoke. We usually call it like fire, I think. Fire hook. Oh, yeah, I've, I've called it that three times. Um, and we have invoke hook. I've said invoke hook once. Ugh. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, I hate when I'm being inconsistent about stuff, but fire hook seems like a good one. So let's stick with that. Um, and then what else do we have? Just the file manager changes, right? And the item view changes as well. Gooey. Um, implement basic visual um, indication of um, drop drag acceptance. Um, indicate drag acceptance by um, okay. A little rectangle. And you drag it. If an index uh, accepts a drag, we now draw a little rectangle around it. Um, if around it. When the drag moves forward. Um, okay, and then these changes are all about dealing with the drop in. Oh my goodness, there's so much unrelated stuff here. It's just happening because of formatting. Sad. Um, how do we get out of this situation? So it's the director view on drop stuff. On drop. So let's take that out. Check out um, apps. File manager. Um, okay, let's reformat and then check it again. And it is a bit gross, but at least it's auto formatted, so it's not going to harass me again about it. Mm, I think that's okay to delete. Uh, I hate when it does this. It looks so dumb. That's slightly better. Um, we'll put them this way. It's not my favorite thing in the universe, but at least it doesn't super irritate me. Have a few more of these. Let's just fix those up as well. Is that it? Here, okay. Ah. All right. Um, okay, and then we can go and add that thingy that we wanted to do here. Boof. And now 
uh, we need URL again. Okay. Cloud Manager support uh, copy items when dragging and dropping them. Um, this patch implements basic drag and drop file management um, in a narrow set of cases. We can now drop a, um, a, a, a um, drag and drop a file onto a um, folder um, in the same directory and the dropped file will be copied into the directory. Um, obviously, this this is nice. <laughs> this is nice. I uh, will need to support more. Um, all the different types of uh, drag and we need to support a lot more variations of this. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, actually, let me change that around. We need to support a lot more variations of this, but this is nice. This is nice. Important. Okay, so I think that this is going to be the end of today's video because I just wanted to get the basic stuff going and get it into one of the view types. So the item view type seemed like the most logical and see we already have a bug right here that the um, drag, uh, the drop rectangle doesn't go away. So that's um, a little bug, but I'm going to leave that in and because I got to go. So, um, Still, I'm pretty happy with the um, functionality that we were able to implement here. And thank you for hanging out. And I hope you saw something interesting. And um, I'm quite happy to continue working on making the desktop a bit more mature and um, get more of this nice uh, drag and drop functionality up and running. So we'll definitely have to get back to this and, and work more on it, but I'm happy that we're making progress. And yeah, I don't know what else to say, so I'll see you next time. Bye.